Welcome to Midwest Bass Magazine. A couple of months ago, I had the opportunity to speak to Chris Seldine, the winner of the Angler of the Year tournament that was in Sturgeon Bay in Wisconsin. Hope you enjoy what he had to say. And, and so, uh, sure. Well, absolutely. Uh, just a few questions for you. Congratulations, by the way, on your win. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm sure the weather actually wasn't too bad here for you, so it probably wasn't quite too cold for you here, seeing that you're from California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Temperature-wise, it wasn't bad, but wind, oh, man, it was, uh, I'll tell you, you know, I, four years on the Elite Tour, um, I've seen wind. I've been out uh, fish the U.S. Open on Lake Mead. I've been out west to the Columbia River, uh, windsurfing capital of the world. But, man, I'll tell you, these great lakes, um gosh they when it blows it, it blows good and i think the third day of practice it blew the worst and it was uh they called for 15 to 25 and i think it was kevin van dam that told me when they say 15 to 25 or 10 to 20 or 15 to 20 you always add the two numbers together and that's what your actual wind <laughs> is and yeah that third day of practice up there on uh in green bay i mean man it was I mean, I I pushed it. I pushed it real hard that day, and, and I just kind of knew what my limits were. And, uh, you know, it blew every single day of the tournament. And uh, it's just it's something else up there. So how was it riding the bay then? How was it uh, handling the waves and things? Uh, yeah, you know, I'll tell you, it wasn't too bad. Um, you know, the way, you know, the way Green Bay lays out and, and uh, Sturgeon Bay lays out, you know that the, everyone knows the fall that fall wind is a predominant south southwest wind and you know so that peninsula that door that door county peninsula kind of blocks that that predominant southwest wind um so you know it wasn't it wasn't too bad but you had a lot of residual if there was a wind change uh you know we had like on the the last day we had a, a wind change um a, a, almost a northeast wind a complete opposite from the southwest so you're constantly trying to change, you know, you're constantly trying to change with the wind. Um, so, but as far as, you know, safety goes and everything like that, everything, everybody was fine. A lot of guys just ran the banks, you know, ran the banks running, running north or running south. That's good. So I just got a few questions about the tournament and then I got a couple of just other, uh, general history questions and things like that. So how, so you're originally from, are you originally from San Jose, California? Originally from San Jose, California. I'm 31 years old. I, I grew up fishing around there, fishing local lakes, and um, you know, started out fishing, you know, and, and all through high school in a little uh, kick boat club, a little belly boat club where we used our float tubes and inflatable kick boat type uh, type uh, inflatables, and you know, fish tournaments doing that um, for a couple of years, and then I worked my way up and, and fished the pro ams as an amateur and. Uh, I think at 18 years old, I, I won a, a, a Pro-Am. It happened to be a, a Bass Open out there in Clear Lake in California, and I won a boat. So um, I ended up using that boat over the next, you know, couple years of my career and, and started fishing the Pro-Ams as a pro, some of the, all the, the West Coast uh, Pro-Ams as, as a pro, and, and uh, you know, just kind of worked my way up from there and ended up, um, you know, fishing the FLW tournaments and, in 2011, I decided to, you know, to try to qualify for the Elite Series and fish the Central Opens and ended up first place in those. In 2012, there I was, uh, Elite Series rookie, and here I am four years later with my first Elite win uh, mm-hmm. on Surger Bay. Nice, nice. So on your way on your way to the, this tournament, what was your thoughts going into the tournament? How did you feel that you needed to attack this, attack this lake? Yeah, yeah, going into it, you know, I, being from California, we're, you know, we're, we're real versatile out there. Um, we really are. It, it's, we, we, we use a lot of light line stuff, six and eight pound test line. And of course, all the smallmouth guys up there in Wisconsin know, you know, smallmouth love, you know, light line. They like biting lures with light line and, um, you know, small quarter and eight ounce base and, and things like that. So, Going into the Surgeon Bay tournament, I mean, I, I love smallmouth fishing, so you know, it was just another smallmouth tournament for me. I was at tenth in points going into it. My my ultimate goal that week was just to finish as high as I possibly could, can you know, the high as I possibly can, and, and just jump as many spots in AOI as I can. And uh, you know, the, the AOI tournament, you know, everyone knew going into it, there was no trophy involved, there was no big hundred thousand dollar check involved for winning the top fifty, you know. 
you know, the AOI championship tournament, but I just wanted to move as far up as possible in the AOI standing. So, um, you know, I fished as hard as I could and, and practiced as hard as I could, ended up locating a couple key areas that led me to a first place finish that week and moved me up four spots from 10th place going into the tournament to sixth place overall in AOI standings, which is my best, uh, my, my best AOI standing finish to date. Uh, I think my second best was a couple of years ago. I had an eighth place finish in, in point. Nice, nice. Um, so did you end up after you found a few spots? Did you end up during the tournament? Did you just fish a couple key areas, or did you run yeah, run around yeah, a lot? Or? Funny, it, yeah, it's funny how the, how these smallmouth tournaments work. And and after four years of fishing on tour, you know, away from home, away from California. I mean, the way I approach it is. You know, they only give us two and a half days of practice, so especially in a smallmouth tournament, I mean, I'm going to have that uh, the Mega Bass Vision 110 bird tape in my hand, you know, almost almost 80% through practice, you know, and, and just cover as much water as possible. The Great Lakes the Great Lake region is real big, so I want to cover as much water as possible. And if I get a bite, I'll hit a waypoint um, and then just keep moving, not, you know, not expand on that particular area. I'll just keep on moving and, and try to get as many bites possible well you know the the two i had three main areas um and only two of them played the first two days and it was a series of offshore uh high spots you know humps it's a shoaly area in the monument point area so there's a lot of shoals in that area well instead of fishing you know the there were like two dozen high spots that topped out in 14 to 16 feet of water um, there were like two dozen of them. Instead of fishing every single one of them and try to find these schools of bait fish and schools of smallmouth on every one of these these high spots, what I did, knowing um, that the fish are in fall transition, they want to kind of go to the bank, go to the shallows, go to the flats, and, and push bait up there and feed to the winter, I, I chose the, the high spot that was closest to the bank because I knew that would get the most smallmouth traffic. And on the opposite side of that, um, I fished the high spot that was closest to the main lake. So all those fish that were um, kind of transitioning from summer to immediate fall coming from the main lake, they would stop on the very first um, high spot. So that was my secondary area. But my primary area was that, that, that high spot, the very first high spot closest to the bank and and uh and in practice i threw a little quarter ounce ball head mega bass spark shad in a three inch um size on a spinning rod um i made two casts of that high spot in practice and, and i caught up like a three and a half pounder which was a good one at the time and then my very next cast one eats it on the fall and it was a giant i mean i don't know how big it was i, I got a hold of it and i really wasn't trying to land it but, you know, it was dogging me, and it ended up pulling off. So I hit two waypoints on that high spot. Didn't, I had no clue how good this spot was, just two waypoints on it. And then I moved on, and I found that other high spot that was uh, out towards the main lake a little more. But it wasn't until about 9 o'clock on, on the very first day of the tournament where I really started expanding on the, on those two main areas. And by the end of the tournament, it turned, I mean, I had maybe 15 or 16 waypoints on this high spot. It ended up being a, a, a almost a flat, almost with uh, scattered boulders the size of table, the size of tabletops on that flat. So I had every single boulder marked on that flat. I had 15 to 16 waypoints on it by the end of the tournament, and I knew, you know, where every boulder was. I knew which cast to make with that with that spark shad. And, um, you know, the beauty of those two spots, um, the absolute key I thought was the presence of the alewives. Um, I had schools and schools of alewives coming through but they're real small schools about the size of a beach ball and every wow. time i'd see one on my yeah every time i'd see uh, a beach ball sized school of bait fish cruised under my graph i would make sure that my next three casts would be you know i'd really pay attention to those next three casts and basically what i do is i look down at my at my rain marine electronics there i pick out a waypoint that was the closest to me because that ball of bait fish was right under the boat and I'd cast to that boulder because I knew, you know, smallmouth would be real close to those balls of bait. So I'd cast to those boulders, cast to those waypoints, and then within the next, within the next three casts, a lot of times I'd catch a fish. So um, that that was huge for me. Very nice, very nice. So after day one, you were sitting in eighth place, correct? Correct. After, after the first day, so any 
any adjustments or just keep keep doing what you were doing after the, after day one? Yeah, I, yeah. After the first day, I kind of knew the area I had, and the thing that I felt really good about is the fact that nobody was fishing that area I was in. I mean, absolutely nobody. Um, a lot of the guys they ran north past me, so everyone kind of knew. All the guys that ran by, it seemed like it was more than half the field ran past me. They knew kind of where I was fishing. They knew I caught 18 pounds, and and uh, they ran right past me in the second day. And on the second day, I, I mean, you know how smallmouth are; they move a lot. And yep. uh, and on this, after weighing 18 and change the first day, I was kind of, you know, I, I really didn't know what to expect on the second day. Um, but it turned out I pulled up on my on my you know my first start spot, my first spot there, and and, uh, and my very first cast, I catch one that was just under it may have been five pounds, just under five pounds, my first cast in my group of waypoints, and uh, and I just thought to myself, they're still here, you know, because smallmouth they move so much, and it was such a relief that very first cast I caught a big one, and, I, and I'm telling myself it's going to be another good day. And, Ended up weighing the biggest bag of that day out of all the 50 guys. It, I, I had the biggest bag on the second day. It was 20 plus pounds. Um, just throwing that little spark chat around, and uh, the bait was present and everything. And then we still had that predominant southwest wind, and uh, you know, we I think we moved into second place behind Hackney, and myself and Hackney kind of separated ourselves from the rest of the crowd. So I knew going into the third day, it was going to be uh, between uh, him and I. Um, and then going into the third day, fast forwarding a little bit into the third day, we had that, that, that wind change and it blew from the north, it blew from the east a little bit. So it was a 180 degree change in, in the weather and, uh, my primary area ended up dying out. It fizzled out because that wind changed, the current changed. So, um, I had to make an adjustment. I, I told myself, I told my camera guy, I've been in this spot before where I've been in position to win and. I'm not going to go down in flames. I'm not going to go down stubborn. <laughs> so I, yeah. So I ended up going to a backup spot that I hadn't, I hadn't finished all through the tournament. It was the only other spot besides my primary area. The only other spot that I found in practice that I had two waypoints on, that I had two bites in one area. So it happened to be about three miles north of my primary area. And when I get there, um, there were other competitors in the area. You know, when I got there, I, I started throwing a jerk bait. I catch one on a jerk bait and then expand on that area a little bit, protected by that northeast wind, expanded on it. And as soon as I picked up that spark shot, I think my first cast of the spark shot, I caught a 413. And that's what did it for me. I go, well, you know, let's expand on this area. I started, I camped out there a little more and ended up filling out my limit for, you know, about 15 pounds. And uh, it was good enough for the wind. Nice. So, so after day two, you're down about a pound and a half. Then you yeah. had a then you had a whole day at a culliver, right? You had the expo, correct? And so yeah, yeah. The whole any, day of an expo and, yeah. any thoughts going through your head while you're while you're waiting to yeah. launch? Oh, <laughs> lots and lots of positive, anxious, anxiety thoughts. Um, that day in the expo, I was paying real close attention to the wind, but I really felt like my my two main areas weren't affected by the wind you know, and the direction changes. Well, 24 hours later and, and 180 degree wind change, it, it turned out my, my primary area was affected by it. So, okay. uh, of course, during that whole day on Saturday, you know, you, you got to put yourself through different scenarios. Like, okay, what if things change? What are you going to do? Right. And that backup area stayed in the back of my mind the whole time. And it ended up paying off for me. Nice. Uh, so what were your thoughts going into the weigh-in? Did you feel like you had it or not Not quite sure? Or? You know, I, I had heard someone squealed out that Hackney had a really bad day, and I don't I didn't know what that meant. I knew I was behind Hackney, so that could have been a small limit. That could have been a blank. That could have been a couple fish. I didn't know. And I, I really, truly didn't know um, that Hackney blanked. And, you know, and like I said, I felt like him and I had separated ourselves and, I truly thought, you know, it was going to come down to it, but it turns out David Walker weighed, you know, one of the biggest bags of the day, and he he was in first place at the time. And I got a text message from my fiance Trait, um, and she said, "You only need twelve and a half pounds, twelve eight exactly." And I go, I, when she texted me that, you know, I thought, well, I think I've got that. You know, I ended up having, you know, with a almost five pounder. I thought I had that in the limit, so I, I felt pretty good about it. But I truly did not know to uh, end up on top. 
until, you know, Hackney went on stage and pulled out an empty bag. <laughs> wow. So what was yeah. your what was your best part of this tournament? What 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 was your favorite part of fishing this body of water yeah, this time around? So, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned it. It was by far the morning of day two, my very first cast. I catch one just under five pounds. Yeah, it could have been five pounds. I don't know. But just that relief. You know, you have an awesome first day, 18 and a half pounds or whatever it was, have an awesome first day. And you just never know it's smallmouth. You never know if they moved on, they moved down the shoal, they moved a couple miles north, a couple miles south, a couple miles out through deep water. You never know. But when I made that first cast and caught that big one, I, I told you know I told my marshal I go they're still here and that was just a huge relief because you know that you could catch the same same bag or better that day and that's what happened so uh, sure. that was uh, truly amazing when I you know catch a giant on my first in my first cast the second day excellent did you have a least favorite part was there a part do you think wow this this is this is no fun <laughs> um yeah you know the first two hours on that same spot on the third day. But again, um, like I said, I've been in that spot before, and and you need to make those decisions. You made need to make that change sooner than later. You can't right. just say, "Oh wow, this spot has brought me this far. It's going to take me up. You know, it's going to take me to the rest of the trip." You know, it never works out that way. It okay. Almost never. And uh, so the first couple hours of the third day, uh, with zero bites, like by nine thirty, I had no fish in the live well. And, you know, the first couple of days I had a, a, a nice limit in the live well. I had, you know, no fish in the live well by 930, so that was my least favorite part. But it allowed me to make the, um, you know, make the adjustment and, uh, and pull out a win. Great. Uh, anything else you'd like to add to the whole tournament or anything else? No, uh, no. I mean, that's it. it was just a great season. And, uh, you know, to, to end up in sixth place overall, um, you know, that's just, uh, you know, we've got, there's at least five guys. In the, in the country that are better than me, so from here on out we get to we get to work on that. And the AOI is definitely uh, definitely within uh, within reach, in my opinion. So that's going to be our new goal for the next couple of years here, and uh, hopefully we get it done. And I hope uh, I hope Bass puts a couple more Wisconsin tournaments on on the uh, on the roster there. That'd be a lot of fun. I see we got one next year in September. Yeah. Yep, in, in yep. lacrosse. Uh, look, we got lacrosse. We got lacrosse, but uh, I'd like to see more uh, smallmouth dominant uh, tournaments. But I'll take that lacrosse tournament. So that's a fun one. We're going to catch a lot of fish. Right, right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank and, you so much, Terry. And uh, I wish you good luck at the. I take it the classic is next. Yep, classic next in uh, March in uh, in Oklahoma. Okay, so, super. So uh, hopefully we'll be doing another interview here uh, in the near future. Thanks for listening in to today's interview with Chris Zeldine. If you would like future interviews sent directly to you along with future issues of the magazine, go to www.midwestbassmagazine.com that's on your screen and hit the subscribe tab and fill out the information. Again, thanks for listening in and thanks to our sponsors and have a great day.